4-6, inverse trig functions. Here we have the graph of sine of x. Sine starts at 0, goes up, and then goes down to negative. This function, it fails the horizontal line test, so it is not one-to-one. -one. In other words, it does not have an inverse that is a function. Now, to find inverses, we switch x and y. So that means the y's that were 1 and negative 1, here are the y's that are 1 and negative 1, they become the x's. And if we graphed sine, we would keep graphing, and it would be this wave going vertically instead of horizontally. Well, that fails the vertical line test, so again, we don't have a function. But we want to investigate inverse sine, and we do want to allow it to be a function if we could. And in order to do that, we just have to restrict the domain. Uh, actually, we're going to restrict the range. The range only goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That way, we get negative values and we get positive values. If we went from 0 to pi, we would only get positive values. The domain of this is negative 1 to 1, and the range of inverse sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. When we look at what's called the principal values, uh, when solving for inverse sine, we get values from quadrant 1, there would be from 0 to pi over 2. Here is 0 to pi over 2, and those are the results, the y values. And from negative 2 to 0, in other words, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when we solve inverse sine functions, we pull values from quadrant 1, and we pull values from quadrant 4. Find the exact value of the inverse sine of square root of 2 over 2 if it exists. Well, the sine of pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 2. That means the inverse sine of square root of 2 over 2 must be pi over 4. So the answer is pi over 4. B, find the exact value of arc sine of negative square root of 3 over 2, which is inverse sine. Remember that we can only pull values from quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. We're looking for an angle that has a sine of negative square root of 3 over 2. That's down here, and that's actually negative pi over 3. Pi over 3 has a sine of square root of 3 over 2, but we're looking for uh, the angle that is negative. Now you have to get that value from quadrant 4, and you, have to, you can't go all the way around to quadrant 4. You have to go the shortest distance to answer the question. Find the exact value of inverse sine of negative 2 pi if it exists. That's kind of a trick question. We can find the sine of 2 pi, and that is actually, actually, we can find the sine of negative 2 pi, and that is 0. But uh, negative 2 pi is not a known angle. Uh, it's not, excuse me, it's a known angle, but it's not a known value. Uh, so the known values are like square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, we know one half, zeros, ones, and uh, we know those, but we don't know values that are negative 2 pi. So this is kind of a trick question. This one can't be done. It does not exist. We can't take the inverse sine of anything that is bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. Restriction cos restricted cosine function. Well, this one fails a horizontal line test, so its inverse is not a function. And to get positive and negative values, we go from 0 to pi. Now, we're talking about inverse, so we're going to flip these. We're going to switch x and y. So the y is usually uh, the y value goes from negative 1 to 1, so now the x value goes from negative 1 to 1. We want positive and negative values. Uh, that means on the y-axis, we are going to go from 0 to pi. Now, on the unit circle, that is quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Now, when we pull out values for inverse cosine, we're going to use quadrant 1 and 2. Those are the principal quadrants. Find the exact value of the inverse cosine of 1 if it exists. From 0 to pi, right here, this point is 1, 0, and this is where cosine is 1. So the inverse cosine of 1 is equal to 0 radians or 0 degrees. Find the exact value of arc cosine, or inverse cosine, of negative square root of 3 over 2. Uh, that's, we're looking at the x-coordinate being negative square root of 3 over 2. That is in the second quadrant, quadrant and that is ha that's 5 pi over 6. 
So this one is 5 pi over 6. Find the exact value of inverse cosine of negative 1 if it exists. Well, the principal quadrants for inverse cosine are 1 and 2. And this is where cosine is negative 1. We have the point negative 1, 0. So this answer is pi. Restricted tangent function. Now we just want to look at one period of tangent and on the x it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and on the y negative 1 to 1 and these are shooting off to infinity. Well on the x-axis for tangent we have negative 1 and 1 and on the y we have pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And uh, this is going on infinitely to the right and infinitely to the left just like this one goes up and down infinitely. So as uh, x goes to infinity for ta inverse tangent this function is leveling off at pi over 2. The quadrants that associate with this graph are just like sine. We have quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. That's where we pull values from uh, for the exercises. Find the exact value of inverse tangent of square root of 3 over 3 if it exists. This is a positive value, so we are looking at quadrant 1. And really the choices are pi over 6, or we could be looking at pi over 3. Now this point is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And I believe it's going to be pi over 6 because sine, 1 half, over cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Multiply the top and bottom by 2, we get 1 over square root of 3, and that is square root of 3 over 3. So this is asking the question, what angle has a tangent that is square root of 3 over 3? And that answer is pi over 6. Whoops, not pi over 4, pi over 6. Find the exact value of arc tangent of 1 if it exists. So inverse tangent of 1, and that is where, where is tangent 1? That's the question. And that happens at pi over 4. Because you have square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, as the point sine over cosine gives you 1. So the answer is pi over 4. Find the exact value of inverse tangent of negative square root of 3. Well, that's, gonna, that's a negative value, and that's, that, uh, the angle is going to come from quadrant 4. So the choices are negative pi over 6, or we could have negative pi over 3. Now let's look at negative pi over 3. That's the point 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. So sine over cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half, and that is when the 2's cancel out negative square root of 3, so the answer is negative pi over 3. Find the exact value of sine of arc sine of 1 half. We have sine. We want to know where sine is a half, and that is at pi over 6, and then the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so these two do actually cancel each other out. They are inverse functions. Find the exact value of inverse cosine of cosine of 5 pi over 2. Let's find out where 5 pi over 2 is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's the same as pi over 2. Cosine of 5 pi over 2 is 0. And the inverse cosine of 0 is actually uh, pi over 2. So the answer is not 5 pi over 2. These actually do not cancel each other out directly but they kind of do in, in, in the fact that this is uh, corresponding angles, but the answer is pi over 2, not 5 pi over 2. Find the exact value of arc tangent of tangent of negative 5 pi over 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're down here at really negative pi over 2. So the tangent of negative 5 pi over 2 is, this is uh, the point 0, negative 1, Tangent is sine over cosine. This is undefined. And now we want to know uh, arc tangent of undefined. So where is tangent undefined? And the answer to that is actually pi over 2. Now tangent is undefined at both negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. But when given the option, uh, what is the arc tangent of undefined? It is actually pi over 2. Letter D, find the exact value of sine of inverse cosine of 4 fifths. Let's put this on the unit circle. Uh, we have uh, this is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. 
So this is 4, this is 5, and we have 16 plus the y squared is equal to 25. Y squared is equal to 9, so this is going to be 3. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So we found the angle. The angle is sitting right here. Now we just have to find the sine of that angle, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. So the value of this is 3 fifths. The principal values inverses defined in for inverse sine we have quadrant 1 and 4 for cosine it's 1 and 2 and for tangent uh, the principal quadrants or the principal values come from quadrant 1 and 4 so 1 and 4 these two right here are sine and tangent and then 1 and 2 uh, that's the principal values or the principal quadrants for cosine 